What's up guys, it's James from Fish Steaks and we're back in Flight Sim. Finally getting around to doing that 747 startup, takeoff and autopilot video. So we'll be learning how to start the plane up from cold and dark. We'll be learning how to set the plane up for an autopilot takeoff and flight. And I'll be showing you exactly how to do that. So without further ado, let's jump into the plane. Okay, first things first. If you want to skip all of this on Xbox, you can just hold right bumper and press right on the D-pad to fire up all your systems, engines included. But as you know, on this channel, we'd like to do things a little bit more realistically. So we are going to go through it step by step. So first thing we're going to do is come to our overhead panel and we're going to switch our standby power over to battery. Then we'll lift this flap and we'll fire the battery on. This now gives us access to our external power switches. So we'll turn both of those on. And we are now connected to our external power. You can see now all of our systems are on. And we're ready to set the aircraft up for takeoff. So first thing to note is our flight plan is already set up in the FMS. If you don't know how to set your flight plan up, there will be a link in the description for that video and also at the end of this video. If you've been following along in the series, this is our Manchester to Helsinki flight that we've got set up. To view that on the 747, you can just come to this legs button and you can see all of your different waypoints here and navigate through them with the next page and previous page buttons. On the 747, all your details are listed here. So this is the speed and this is the flight level for each waypoint. But what we need to know right now is our takeoff speed and what we're going to set our altitude to. So we're going to come down to the init ref and then we're going to go to takeoff. And we can see here all of our takeoff details. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set our flaps for takeoff on the 747. I'm going to set our flaps to 10. So we're going to type in 10 and hit this button here to set our flaps to 10. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our takeoff speed. Now, I'm using our V2 speed here of 208 knots. So I'm going to come up to our speed and switch this to 208 like so and we already know our cruising altitude if you were keen eye you would have spotted it as i was looking through the flight plan but i'll show you how to check it anyway we come down to our init ref again and we go to performance we can see we have a cruising altitude of 430 430 which is 43,000 feet so we're going to set that just up here okay with that set we are now ready to move on to the next step so I'm going to switch this back to legs, just ready for our takeoff. And then we're going to come up here and turn our flight director on. Once we've got our flight director on, I am going to make everybody aware that this is an active aircraft by switching on the nav lights and also setting the beacon to on. This will let the ground crews know that we are ready to begin moving shortly. I'm also going to put our weather information display on here because I just prefer this. And I am going to set our range to 10 nautical miles ready for takeoff. You don't have to do that, but it's my preferred way of takeoff. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're now ready to remove ourselves from the ground power and set up our APU. Now, you might remember from the Airbus tutorial, once your APU triggers, your AI co-pilot, if you have him set to use ATC, will request pushback. So your pushback is going to begin once your APU starts up. Start your APU up, flick the switch over to on, and we're going to flick the switch over to start. When we do that, it will automatically flick itself back to on, as you see there. And now the APU has started up. What we're waiting for now is APU Gen 1 and 2 to light up. And when they do, we can select those to connect to our APU. There we go. The available light has come on, so we turn both of those on. And at this point, push back will have begun. You can see it getting into position there. So, we are just going to wait now for the pushback tug, which you will see when the aircraft jolts, you'll also feel a vibration in the controller. Once that happens, we can release our parking brake, and the aircraft will begin to move backwards. There it is, so we'll release our parking brake, and the aircraft begins to move backwards. At this point, you can start to turn on your engines, but as always, I'm going to wait until we've stopped and we're stationary, so I can explain everything nice and clearly. I am also going to request 
Push bag steer to the left. So that our aircraft moves to the right. Ready for taxi. Okay, so at this point we can begin to turn our engines on. Now, in the 747, it has four engines, unlike the Airbus, which only had two. And typically in the 747, you start them one by one, and you'll go from four all the way down to one. So we're going to start with four. We come up to the overhead display, and we'll put both fuel switch pumps on for four, and then we'll pull the engine start. And then we're going to come down to this display here, and we're waiting for this number to start moving. You can see the 0 0.1. Once it flicks to 0 0.2, there we go, I'm going to put our fuel control on. And now what we're doing is we're waiting for that engine to settle. So what we're essentially waiting for is this starter engine to flick back into position on its own. It'll do it automatically. You'll see it slide up into position. Once that happens, we can begin to turn on engine 3, and then 2, and then 1, etc. Okay, as you can see, 4 has reset, so now we come to 3. Fuel pumps on, engine start. Come down here, wait for a little bit of movement on the engine itself. And then we will activate the fuel control. And again, we wait for engine 2 to be ready. Obviously, this takes a little bit of time, so for the purpose of this video, I am jump cutting between engines in case you're wondering why yours is taking so long okay so we're ready for engine 2 same as both other engines fuel switches go on pull the engine start wait for a bit of movement here on this screen and fuel pump activate okay we're ready to go with engine 1 fuel pumps Engine start. And fuel control. Okay, while we wait for those engines to settle, there are a couple of things we can do. We want to arm our speed brake. Like so. We want to set our flaps for takeoff to 10. And we can turn on our taxi light. As you can see, we've been granted our taxiway there. You can see the taxi ribbon. If you are doing manual air traffic control, then at this point you would request your taxiway. But my co-pilot is doing that for me, so you can see it's already been requested. We are ready to taxi off as soon as these engines are warmed up and ready to go. Okay, so as usual, we're going to give the aircraft a little bit of juice. and we're using right trigger and left trigger to steer the aircraft so rudder only no need to touch the yoke at this point remember keep things nice and slow on the taxiway and we're going to the hold short where we will stop and set things up ready for takeoff for the purpose of this video i will speed this section up and see you at the hold short So we're here at the hold short, which as you know is where we make sure that everything is safe on the runway for our plane to enter, make sure there's no incoming flights or anyone currently on the runway. So while we're here, there's a couple of things we need to do. We can turn our taxi lights off now as we've completed the taxiing, and we can turn all of our landing lights on since we are getting ready for a takeoff. I also like to turn the strobe on make sure we are nice and visible on the runway. And the next thing we can do is we can request our takeoff clearance so we come up to our ATC and you'll see here we are holding short on the runway so we can tune into ground it does say here contact tower on 118.63 when ready so we contact tower 118.63 and we re request takeoff clearance from Manchester and there you can see we've been granted clear for takeoff our taxi ribbon has disappeared now because we are clear for takeoff our altimeter reading is 2992, that's the important information you're looking at here. So we need to make sure 
that we match that on the plane come up to your barometer here and you can see we're already on 2992 so that's fine if yours is not matching what ATC have read out to you then you do need to change that okay so we are now ready to move into position on the runway ready for takeoff so I'm gonna skip over to that section and talk you through the auto throttle So here we are on the runway guys and we are ready to take off. There's a couple of things I want to just discuss about the auto throttle and about auto takeoff before we get there. So first of all we're going to arm our auto throttle. And before I do activate the auto throttle and begin takeoff I just want to go over a couple of things that we are about to do. So first of all we'll be keeping our eyes on our V speeds. You can see V1 here. Once the plane begins to move the V1 will start to travel down the screen once we hit our V1 speed the aircraft will call it out for us. What this means is that we've reached the point where the plane can no longer stop on the runway. We have to take off at this point. Following V1 shortly after will be VR. Once we hit VR, we can pull back on the yoke and begin our ascent. As long as we have a clean ascent, we can then raise the landing gear. Before we do any of that, let's set the auto brake. So we're going to switch the auto brake to RTO. This is rejected takeoff. If for any reason the plane doesn't take off, then our auto brakes will kick in. But hopefully today we are going to take off. And that's about it, guys. The heading, just match your heading to the heading of your runway. I've already done this. You can see 234 and we are heading in 234 right now which is just down this runway so we are ready to go auto throttle is armed to begin the auto throttle we come down to here and you can see these toga switches in between the throttle here we're going to hit a on that and the auto throttle will begin you can see it firing up as soon as i release this parking brake we are off so without further ado let's get it okay off we go guys and remember we're just watching those v speeds now As we start to approach V1, I'm going to push down on the yoke slightly just to make sure the nose stays on the ground. V1. And VR, we can pull back on the yoke. And there you go. We've begun our ascent. Now the next thing to do is make sure that you are definitely ascending. Which we are. Nice clean ascent there. So we can come over here and we can raise our landing gear. We're also free to set our flaps back to zero. Now at this point we can go ahead and activate our autopilot. So to do this on the 747 you come over here to AP engage and we're going to engage the left autopilot. Then we're going to come along to LNAV and VNAV and engage both of those. You might notice now our speed is gone. So what this means is the plane is now taking all its information from the FMS and from our flight plan. You can see it's already beginning to follow it. So, just quickly to explain, LNAV is lateral navigation and VNAV is vertical navigation. So the LNAV will laterally follow our flight plan. So it's going to follow the GPS. VNAV will vertically follow our flight plan. So, as you can see in our flight plan, all of our different flight levels are listed next to each waypoint so the plane is going to take all of its information for what altitude it should be at from the fms next to the fms here is our speed the plane is also taking its speed data from the fms via the auto throttle which is now fully engaged which is why we have no speed readout here on the console once we are up in the air we can go ahead and turn our landing lights off Beacon lights, nav lights, strobe lights can remain on or off depending on weather conditions. So, as you know, autopilot's engaged, plane is following the flight path. We are now free to sit back, relax and take in the sights. This plane will fly all the way to Helsinki on its own, absolutely no problems. Now, should you need to change altitude, change heading or change speed for any reason on your flight I'm going to do a quick video to explain how you would do that whilst keeping autopilot engaged so you don't have to take manual control of the aircraft that'll be the next video coming up but 
that's it for this video guys we've covered your startup from cold and dead we've covered the auto throttle the autopilot and how to take off with the correct takeoff routine thank you very much for watching do let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see and if you are enjoying the flight sim content don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell to be notified about the next flight sim video coming your way shortly on the 747 that's it from me until next time peace